Cambodia. I love from Paris and I love from friend. This is Reg. You may have found a baby in a washing basket, or if you were posh, 
You may have found the baby in a crib. It is your chance. It has, in it? I mean, they don't shorten them. That's tr uh, short and straight away, isn't that? Huh? Out to the world, into the jewel suit. <laughs> no basket, no crib, no I'm rocker in front of the telly. <laughs> After two weeks, have you seen him smile? Oh, he's got a lovely smile. You dare tell him it's wind. <laughs> years gone by, you've fed him up with one of these. <laughs> Anyway, and just for one moment all, and listen to that sound. <laughs> Lovely, wasn't it? And then they threw it out of the shelf and put the lily down. <laughs> and I've got a tip for you. Grandmas, if you get left with the bab, nowadays you want a roll of sellotape. <laughs> you know, the Saturday morning taking it to turn into three hours, will you have the bab? I'll leave you a spare nap, eh? You know, if you put one of these on, and it doesn't stick the first time you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Roll a cellotype, two rooms down, safe for houses. Oh, it was wonderful time. Remember the first pair of shoes? That was gorgeous, weren't they? There was buckskin, remember buckskin? Oh, yeah. Do you remember the first pair of black patents? Oh, yes. Yeah. Grandma was going really to buy those, didn't she? Oh, yeah. The black patents, we still got a pair in the wardrobe. Oh, that was a wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful time. And then we move on to a time that you can remember. A time when life was full of wonder and gifts. And you remember, you'd be at six years old. And there was one special night of the week that you looked forward to. Can you remember what it was? Friday night. Friday night was pocket money. Remember it? Depending, depending how your dad had done during the week, you got pocket money. Some people used to say, bath night. Yeah, there was a night. Remember it? Bath night. Tin bath up the SO, remember? Yeah. And this lovely dove soul. Oh. oh. How nice. And the lads will tell you they knew when they were going to get the bath. <laughs> the mucky is still last. <laughs> the is still first. But Friday night, pocket money night, what was better? Let's have a look. Remember a penny or a penny? Can you remember yeah. what you bought? Yeah. Well, yeah, fear or favour. The most popular thing in the world. Remember Caroline? Remember sticking yeah. your finger in? Remember chaps? You stuck your finger in? You got it all on him? It was really great. You spent one eighty on Caroline and the other eighty on a packet of sucky fags. And there you go. It's stand. <laughs> oh, yes, I love it. Somebody to come out of the shop saying, Have you got a fat card, please? <laughs> but but can you remember when you stuck in the car line? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you stuck. Literally sticking. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. But Grandma put something else in the car line. Can anybody? Yes. Oh, yes. Ah, oh, now what is it? <laughs> Locust <laughs> bean. Yes. Locust bean. This was Grandma's licorice. Yes, if you're much younger, I'll tell you what this was. This was that horrible thing in the end of a lucky bag which you never ate. <laughs> you always thought it was dried banana. Yeah, right. So you didn't bother to eat that. There was licorice wood. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Licorice wood. I used to love that. Remember how you used to chew it until you got one yeah. grain big ball in your mouth and oh, oh, it was gorgeous. That. Spanish juice, some of you probably call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But when you go to the school now, that kids need to just stick a privet. Yes. Why do you want to stick a privet in your mouth? And then of course, the, you could always smoke a licorice pipe. You could have a good drag of a pipe. But this is the insane that thing is. that you get nowadays for a pipe. Because unfortunately, the stalls can't sell fire. So if you go for a licorice pipe, 
this is what you're going to buy. The it, it, pipe is, it, it's not got bent now. It's like, you can't ask for a packet of sucky bags anymore. You have to ask for a packet of candy sticks. Oh. <laughs> Put your own little red end on it. And then, of course, there was a golf stopper. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 over there, and then there's a point in the tour where I always get a little bit personal. I do apologise, and it's that point. It's the only time I get for this one. Can anybody remember the first kiss? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean when you were a teenager. No. I mean when you were about this big. The back of the foul pen. Remember. <laughs> He brought a lucky back. He got romantic. And he found a diamond ring with her. And he says, give us a kiss. We'll get engaged. Romance started in life. He started to drink. He brought wine guns. They poured sherry and all the rest of it. She started to grow up. Lipstick, sherry oh. lips. Oh, it was gorgeous. And the battery on the mobile phone never went flat. <laughs> Do you love me? Yes. <laughs> After one afternoon of talk, a lady came to us and she said, Red, she said, why I've enjoyed the talk. Well, that's nice of you. She says, but it was a tin can that was the most important. Why there? She says, my boyfriend used to live next door to me when I was a little girl. And I said, yes. And mummy made us go to bed very early. And I said, yes. <laughs> she said, but we never minded. I said, oh. No, she said, you see, he got a mobile phone. <laughs> she said, his bedroom window was next to mine. She said, and he used to sling me to crops. Oh, Red, she said, we had the most gorgeous chats. <laughs> and I pictured him rolling out of the bedroom window. <laughs> she said, but Mummy found out. I said, oh dear. <laughs> yes. She cut the string. <laughs> rolling had gone out of the window. And then came that time, Sunday school time, when somebody said, would you take some of these home to sell for the Sunday school anniversary? Remember, full nine a cent <laughs> Wonderful time at the Sunday school anniversary. Do you remember them? Yes. Front row. <laughs> and your poor mother. And you complained. And then you went. <laughs> and your mother had kittens. Please, please behave yourself. And then the organ struck up that little hymn that you'd learn. Oh, did you sing your little heart out? And then you gradually moved up, remember it? Yeah. Last year's frock in the morning, the posh frock in the afternoon, the night in May, all the rest of them all come. Wonderful, wonderful times. And then there was the spearmint machine. Do you remember the spearmint machine? <laughs> When you could get beech nut, <laughs> you could get PK. And then there was a little one, a little tiny one, called XL. Remember it? Five colours. And you went off with your Aunt Yin Yang to the spearmint machine, and you always looked at the little knob on the side. <laughs> because there used to be an arrow. Do you remember it? And every fourth go, we got two puppies. <laughs> and you got there to have a look where the arrow was. And oh, if it had got one to go, you'd stand and think, it's got another one to go. Wait, somebody could have come. And then the best friend that was, Cain. Oh, it's got another one to go. I noticed, and she know. Well, she's got eight now. And she says, she's got eight now. And then you stood with a great trial of strength. And if she put her right in first, you didn't give her a chance to put the next one in. In lock a lot. Two packets. And then the row started. 
Thought you hadn't got the height, me. By the time you took me nickel, I ain't even come on. <laughs> and then there was Sherbert, remember Sherbert? Sure, yeah. And again that time with Romance, when you'd had pickled onions and you was gonna kiss him, so you had a palm of violet. <laughs> and then came that pretty, pretty moment oh. when he didn't kiss you anymore. Oh. And you thought, well, this is it, it's all over. <laughs> so you fetched the little fish out. Give you the test. Do you remember the little fish? Yeah. Now you put your hand out. Come on, put your hand And you put your hand out, and you put the little fish on your hand, and wait for it to turn up. Oh! Oh! Passion unleashed. Don't worry about it going that way, though. Because you thought it was going to go that way. Yes, you yeah. did. Well, that's a dead fish. <laughs> When I see them for sale, I would buy a pack. Yeah. And I saw these in Devon, and I bought a pack. Yeah. And for some unknown reason, Devon fish go that way, not that way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of fuss over this. You imagine going into a nurse now where you've got a row of old days about 90, and you know how it works. It's, your hand's got to be warm, and you put it on the cold hand. Oh, dear. <laughs> You've had it. <laughs> oh dear. It ain't gone on. You've had it. So what I have to do is blow it. And blow it on. And by God, are they glad. Passion on these. We're back into the world and living. And then now I want you to come with me now to another time. A wonderful time which you'll all remember. When it didn't cost a fortune to play games because you've got your own way of playing and your own games. And the most favoured one of all is Tom and Wick. And believe me, I've been away on the holidays and I've all of it. And the lady that sold it, Lisa, she said, I don't know where they used it. But you do, don't you, remember? Yeah. You wrap the string round, put it, walk it down. Oh, oh, did you give it some stick? <laughs> White chalk on the top, remember, with the silver paper, and then your name is flown straight through somebody's window. <laughs> <laughs> that was another top, that was a monkey top or a carrot top. Do you remember that one? It was a long, thin one. Where are we? Down here. There we are. Remember it? Yes. The monkey yes. spun that with your finger and thumb. Yes. And then there was corking. Oh, yeah. Right now, woman, you've got your mother's hair. Oh, it's gorgeous, wouldn't it? And then the lad, I don't know whether the lad could have agreed to it. He used to fly horses, remember? The girls made the rides and passed them around, you know, and you'd jump around the play there. And you see, ten years old, you'd have been today. Well, you know, you'd have been there for ten years. And then, of course, there was a wizard. Do you remember the wizard? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 We've got so many stories, and the story about the wizard I've repeated hundreds of times, but it's so lovely. We were at a church in Stafford, and the room was full. And we were we talking about the games, and there was an elderly gentleman on the front row. Oh, well, he did seem to be having a great time. And when you get somebody like that, you tend to play to that person for everybody else's pleasure. So I played to him, but we had a great afternoon, you know. And then when I finished talking, I went over and I said, I hope you didn't mind us, but you see, with they was enjoying the afternoon. I have enjoyed it, he said, it's been lovely this afternoon. He said, but you ain't got a wizard. I said, no, I ain't, but I'll get a wizard. You want a wizard, he said. Yes, I'll get one. Oh, it has been lovely, he says. The only thing is, just after you started, me deaf, I went flat, mate. <laughs> Blow it up in January and still be kicking it in February and March. Yeah. Netball, all gorgeous. Then there was a tune of a pair of packers. That was the band, and then the chorus of the girls. Well, what did you have? A kazoo, remember? Yes. Oh, it was gorgeous, wasn't it? Tip cats, remember tip oh, cats? Yeah. Yes. And of course, the lads at the corner were what was better than a good old fire cat. <laughs> Round to round it went. Never pedal blocks. When the dead air was to the air, when the wire broke through the air, 
that was so good, you saw. Oh, it was gorgeous, it was, not it? Then there was five jacks, remember five jacks? And then, of course, the equipment got far without a yow yow. Oh, Up and down it went. And I can't go one farther without mentioning my dear little friend. She's done hundreds of miles with me. A peg dog. Oh, yeah. You had a peg dog, remember? Yeah. And you remember you used to play shops? Oh, yeah. You had a plant for wood, yeah. some dock leaf for meat. And when it was your turn to be the shopkeeper, it was all right. But when the girl said, it's a wee turn for us to be shopkeeper, you said, oh, I just hear my mother falling down. <laughs> oh, and then there were the days of the seaside. Oh, remember when you went to the seaside, the thrill of it all? You hadn't seen the scene, your mother said, I'll make sure you posh my wench. <laughs> That's your nice fitted costume, remember it? Yeah. Remember how we used It was Madonna on the beach and Connor in the sea. Yeah. Oh, it was really, really exciting time. And of course, the lads, they could play cowboys and Indians. All they needed was half a peg, bang, bang, up along Cassidy, Indian Art. And then remember when the neat nurse used to come? <laughs> yes, there it is. Friday night neat nurse. Remember it? Vinegar and brown paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wonderful, wonderful time. And then of course, you could always play. I I knocked the door, two door knockers tied together. <laughs> Remember stuck in somebody's drive by the <laughs> setting fire to it, a roaring devil. <laughs> and then there was the one guy that everybody loved all. You couldn't go far wrong with a good guy of Skippy. Oh, there, there was a guy. Oh, yeah. Remember it? Yeah. Bitch, batch, pepper. <coughs> I call him my very best friend. Remember it? Do you remember the rhymes? Let's have a go then. Nebuchadnezzar the king of the Jews bought his wife a pair of shoes. When the shoes began to wear, the Nebuchadnezzar began to sweat. Oh, look at the Jelly on the plate, jelly on the plate. We will wobble, we will wobble, jelly on the plate. Custard on the spoon, custard on the spoon. Lick it off, lick it off, custard on the spoon. Salome was a dancer. She danced the hoochie cooch. She shook her shimmy shoulder and showed a bit too much. <laughs> Stop that, said King Gellard. You can't do that round here. Salome said, Baloney, and I kicked him in the air. <laughs> Sally go round the sun. Sally go round the moon. And Sally go round the chimney pot for Sunday afternoon. Now there's one, one rhyme that I have a bit of trouble ending with. Now you can perhaps help me with it. And it's got something to do with common mustard. <laughs> so I'll start it, perhaps you can finish it off for me. All right? Ready? Common mustard, common starch. Very, very sorry for me, and they made me a pair. <laughs> now, this is 
the only pair of knickers like this in the world, and that is the truth because it's in the waistband made at the BBC Ever Mill. But they're no good. The waist ain't right, is it? The pocket ain't right, is it? And the cut of the leg ain't right, is it? How do you know? <laughs> down in the Devonshire and she's got to quite a selection. She says, ready to get two pair, let me have them. I just can't get a pair of knickers. But, but, Methodism being Methodism, they found a method of getting them. <laughs> a dear lady found them in the jungle sale. And there they are. Now we're talking, aren't we? <laughs> Now we've got the waistband you put a bodkin in. Now we've got the cut of the leg, did not we? And there's a story which I'll tell you very quickly of the old man over in the West Midlands at the after the talk, he comes and he says, Old Mon Red, he says, them knickers did bring the story back to me. <laughs> I thought, now what's going to come? <laughs> it's when I was a little kid, he saw something tass. He says, I mean, I was running. <laughs> he said, I know this little wench next to me had got a anky in her nicker leg. <laughs> he said, so I thought, if I can get her anky, I wouldn't know. <laughs> he said, so I started to fell it about. <laughs> oh, he says, Red, what happened after that was wicked. Her screamed, he said, of course, in them days, it was now in the word and the blow. He said, before I knew what was happening, the teacher was dealt, bang. But I ain't touched them up. Keep over. You're a disgusting boy. <laughs> he did it. Oh, Dad, he said. It's well, she said, oh, I'm going to tell my mum when I get home. He said, because I got home, I told her mum. Her mum told mama, you know what happened, Red? Bang! I've got another one. But I didn't touch her. And I'm telling your dad that he couldn't tell her. <laughs> I was he put it, and father come home. And he says, come here, you. What you been up to? He said, nothing, Dad. Bang, I've got another one. He said, that's in case you do. <laughs> but Dad, I didn't touch her. He said, but Red, the worst of all was to come. He said, there come this little wench. He says, to the door. I put her finger in her mouth. He says, hey, you will come to play with me. <laughs> he says, play with you? I've had enough trouble trying to wipe my nose. <laughs> and then there was Scots. Remember Ops Oh, yes. Yes. Do you remember you marked the pitch out? Yes. What? Yes. Bit of chalk. Chalk. I'll tell you what I'm thinking about. Remember, your dad used to have a ball of whitening. Yes. Remember? And that whitening was today's watermark, wasn't it? Yes. The emulsion. And your dad, he used to, well, he used to do the old place when he started, he didn't he? I mean, he did the kitchen, he did the brewers, he did well, the pig died. In fact, he did every room in the house, didn't he? Oh, of course. <laughs> Yeah. And do you know, ladies and gentlemen, there was a status symbol to this. Do you know that newspaper was more hygienic than today's toilet rolls? But it's true because, again, as I say, we verify everything. And we were talking to a lady at one venue, and she used to work at an ink works where they prepared the ink for the papers, and there was something in that ink that was like a disinfectant. And there you are. We thought that was common, but they were very posh. And then remember when Auntie Mary used to come? <laughs> and your mother used to go to market, and she used to get some orange papers. <laughs> they used to iron them, remember? They ironed them. And they were counted, and they went on the back of the door. Not only a string, but on the back of the door. <laughs> and woe betide you if you yeah, took yeah, some yeah. of that before Auntie Mary had gone home. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful times of childhood. And if you were a child a hundred years ago, this is what would have been in your Christmas stocking if you were a very rich boy. This is over a hundred years old. And, <coughs> yes, it will still play its merry tune. And it's hard to explain to a modern child that this would be equivalent to a gay boy 
or yeah. something. Yeah. You know, and he would be a very, very rich bloody that had that. And of course, chaps, you can't have a catapult anymore. No. 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 Catapults have gone, and of course, there was a lovely game oh, with Grandad's pipe. Oh. Some soft suds, and you could oh, blow on bubbles for hours and hours. And I was at the school the other week, and one of the boys said, Well, didn't it taste of salt? And I said, Yes, I wonder how many Grandad said, Mary? Yes. This back of stays to carbolic. <laughs> you knew why it tasted to carbolic. Because the kids had had a merry, merry time there on the doorstep, smoking granddad's pipe with bubbles. And there was conkers. Yes. And then there was, coming up into the early years, the war years, a cat bomb. What was better than a cat bomb? Yeah. it up. And remember you had your handkerchief and your tight full knots and tough smiles and the pile and come down, down the world. But time is running on and we must move on. And I want you to move to another era with me now. The hard times. There was hard times. The hard times of the dolly tub. <laughs> no automatic washer. The dolly tub with five that way and five that way. That was really hard times. But also, there was some beauty in those hard times, because a hundred years ago, look at this, baptism time, and a hundred and odd years ago, a little boy was baptised in that gown, and of course, there was a cake. What was nicer than a cake? And I don't know whether you know the status symbol of the cape. It depended on the length, if it was long, and if they were above one layer, one, two, three layers on the cape, well, this was the status symbol, to use a Midland word. Long cape, three layers, we've got a posh baby being baptised. There was beautiful times. But as I say, there was hard times. But everything was so white, wasn't it? So clean and so fresh because of the labour that went into it. But you never heard your mother or grandmother grumble about the hard work because she was a very, very sensible woman and she always had a good uh, stains on her. Her back was always well protected and on Sunday nights going to church at chapel, they always knew who got a new pair of stays on. She was the one that walked like that. <laughs> because she hadn't fetched the bowl now that went through the rooms. You know. And you never heard her say she'd got chopped legs, did you? No, you didn't. Because she'd always got a good pair of drawers. Now I know I'm in the house of the Lord and what I'm about to tell you is not wrong. But this was Grandma's first taste and Grandad's first taste of sex. <laughs> you might say why. Remember the hypney and the penny? Well Grandad used to get his hypney. And when he come out of school, he turned to his mate and he'd say, let's go and have some suck. Now throw your minds back, there were front room shops. Remember the front room shop? Yes. And who kept the front room shops? A dear lady with a black pinafore, grey hair tied at the back, and you can see her now, there she'd be, standing at the shop. Now, Grandad's got his opening, and in he comes. Imagine the scene. Yes, my son? I put the toppies, please. Oh, yes. Off the top. Oh, there you go. And off she'd go back and she'd fetch that three step stool. Remember? Yeah. All the shops in that three step stool, didn't they? And she'd get the stool and as she went up to get the toffees out, Grandad would say, Oh, she done, and they was pink. <laughs> there was pink ones, there was blue, blue ones. All lovely to keep you warm. 
And earlier in the talk, I showed you baby liberty. Well, now we have mother of liberty. <laughs> Remember where you were? Can you imagine this schoolroom? No. A hundred years ago, with the old fire stove in the middle, and everybody wrapped up, you'd have your liberty <laughs> bodies on, wouldn't you? Independent suspension. <laughs> Do you remember what you used when the little bit broke off the bottom? Yes. I know what? A barbie. Minty peel. Yeah. Pearl button. Anything to keep you well supported. Oh, well, they were lovely, weren't they? The rubber button just went through the sun. It was really gorgeous. And then, of course, if it was hundred years ago, well, what was nicer than making sure it was there? And there's a flap in the back. <laughs> Imagine a scene in school classroom. Reg and Brenda giving a history lesson. Now, I assure you I don't talk like this for history, but we do the toys and everything's fine. <coughs> And the teacher says, what are you doing for the rest of the day, Mr. Fuller? <laughs> well, I says, nothing, I'm retired now. Well, we know you've got some old clothes. Would you like to show them to the children? <laughs> I said, I don't mind. Brenda said, what are you going to do? He goes, we'll be all right. So I held them up and I said, could any little boy or girl tell me who wore these? Expect him to say the grand or the granddad, wouldn't you? <laughs> no. He put his hand up and he said, Sir, and I said, Yes, sir. He says, Come, I went the last of summer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
We used to call them Carter's knickers until we went to a home in Anglecote and an elderly lady said, no, Reg, they're backdoor rumblers. <laughs> and I wore them on my honeymoon and I thought, well, I don't argue with you. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason they're called backdoor rumblers, if you notice, there's some tape. And when you were in, he was tied in these. He was really well and truly in it. I mean, they've got tiny waists. And, you know, years gone by, there used to be a wonderful saying, that inner cleanliness was next to cleanliness. Right? And if you weren't very well, your mother says, have you been? And if, <laughs> if you haven't been, your mother says, I'll shift you. <laughs> and she gave you the fastest thing on earth, the centipods. Oh. You imagine you had two centipods and you tied him here. <laughs> they say it was a very moving experience. <laughs> but they weren't that gone by because they said you know who was going if they hadn't been. They were the one that was rushing up the garden path with a candle in the right hand, left hand behind the back, undoing one, two, three buttons and he was bombed away. And there you are. Back door on the book we haven't finished yet. Because there was the elite and Underwear. Now Brenda says there's a posh rock that's coming tonight, so I'll put it. <laughs> and this is the most oldest and most interesting article oh, we've got. Nice. Now this is nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very Brenda nice. don't mind putting these on the line. Oh no, no, no. no. <laughs> but that's going to be to Dorothy Perkins again. Oh. Well, imagine the days of the crinoline. Now the crinoline was a lovely time, wasn't it? Proper elegance. But there was time when the lady wished she hadn't got a crinoline gown on. And you imagine a sunny day like last week. And it was the time of the Victorians. No tarmac on the roads, and you were just walking down. And the Victorian lady came and said, Hello, I haven't seen you for years. And you're wondering, who is it? <laughs> Isn't it a beautiful day? Oh, yes. Well, hasn't your child grown? Well, I don't recall when I... Oh, it must be months since I saw you, but aren't we having lovely weather? And you're thinking, oh, is it? Oh, is it? <laughs> it hasn't rained for days, has it? And the sun's so nice. Well, my dear, I must away. And as she walked away, you looked at the sky, and you looked at the ground, and you thought, well, I didn't see it rain. While she was standing there with her. No, you didn't, you see, because that's why these were worn under the crinoline. There was only an anklet to them. And there you are. There was just an anklet and nothing in the middle. And those were worn under the crinoline. And it was a time of elegance. A time when lovely. On the skirts were warm. <coughs> Beautiful on the skirts. A time when you wore a fox fur and nobody complained that you wore the fox fur. It was a time of elegant dress. A time when oh, no. a wedding dress like this was worn by a dear lady who once graced our church, Mrs. Bowler. Mrs. Bowler, a time when elegance was there. Then a time. Oh, I like the black. Oh, the evening dress. Another name. And perhaps you were fortunate to have the money to have been to Harrods. Very lovely evening bag. And this is a genuine Harrods bag. And you may have worn the most delicate old gloves. Of gloves. Real key. Mm. You may have done your hair the night before. 
with a dinky curler. <laughs> a dinky curler, yeah. You may have used a proper rat trap. Coming up with our younger members. The time of fishnet stockings. The time of fully fashioned. And if you couldn't get fully fashioned, you turn them inside out and got the scissors and trim them round and away you went. And what is now becoming an antique, you probably did your face with a powder puff. And in the war, you might have been fortunate to have a box of ponds. And, of course, talking about elegance, but what was nicer than an underskirt that was hand embroidered? And a beautiful top to go. It was a wonderful period of elegance. And talking about the war, remember when your dad was going to save the country with a piece of wood and the knife on the end, the LDV, look, duck and vanish. <laughs> and then he became the home guard. And you lads went to school with a balaclava. <laughs> Oh, it was a wonderful time. And if you were lucky to get a pair of Lyle stockings Ooh, yeah. that have got that little mark on the bottom, there it was. And, of course, we have another little old memory finder here. Has anybody been in the guides? <laughs> <laughs> if we've got the Treffle Guild members here, they might be interested to see this because this is an original first guide uniform. The first one was khaki, and then along came this. And it's identified by the hook and eye and no button. Remember the guides? Yes. Yeah, well come on then. I am a girl guide. Yes. These are the actions that I have to do. Salute to the king and bow to the queen and turn your back on Marjorie. Wonderful, wonderful time. <laughs> and so we walk and we walk in through memory lane and we come now to the 90s. What gorgeous 90s could you see? And look how beautiful and white they were. And you could snuggle up with the oven brick, remember? You had the oven brick, wrapped it up in a cardigan. I'm going to bed first, you'll get warmer the best way you can. And you went into that feather filled mattress, remember? It? And the iron beds in street as you got in. But they were lovely and lovely warm. And of course, the, the children also had their little nighties, which they wore with great pride. Just like oh, yeah. mum and dad. It was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time. When the bath, well, you brushed and combed them with celluloid and genuine hair. You could see their little faces now with these sets. That was a real baby set. A time of, again, of elegance. And dad wouldn't have come out tonight without his body binder on. He got out his body binder on. And so we go on and on into memory lane and we come to the bag which we call our R bag. But all the things that I've shown you have all been material things. And we always think about memories and treasures of being something touchable, something to shine, something to hold. But we have one memory that isn't worth a cent. And yet to Brenner and I is one of the most treasured memories. It's simply 
a little bit of paper. I don't know how many can see it from the back. Does anybody remember the colour of this? Can you remember your co-op visit? The reason this is such a treasure, we, over the years that we've done the talks, we've visited schools and all various places, but the one that stands in our mind was a nursing home in Ambercote. And sadly when you get there, to places like that, Alzheimer's is present. <coughs> but it doesn't bother us because we've accepted that people will show them the thing. And there's one night, we've done the talk, and there becomes a silence when you go into a nursing home. It's full of joy, and then when you shut up, And you think, now what should I do? And I spotted this co-op check. And one dear lady that night, down the far corner on the left hand side, she had not shown that much interest. It didn't bother us. So I thought I'd break the ice again. So I said, can anybody remember the co-op check number? And wonder upon wonder, this dear soul called me. And I went to her. And she says, you've been here before. Oh. And I said, yes, look. I know the check number. And she told me a check number. And I thought, that's right, my love. Yes, yes, you've been here before. And when I went back to the lady, I said, well, we've had some fun over the cold check number. I thought that lady down the corner, I said, she called me over. She, she said, you got the right lady? And I said, yes. She never speaks, Rachel. I said, she did. She told me her co-op check number. And I think that is a wonderful treasure, I don't know. <laughs> because that got through a little number. It's the same with the fellas. Forces, two one seven one six double one. Right number, that number, fifth number, a number. And it doesn't cost you one penny. Yet, we're always careful when we pack up. We make sure we've got, we like to take, make sure we've got everything. But this, of all the treasures we've got, is the most important. <laughs> well, we come back to the little back. And this is what we call the R back. Because in here, we've got some lovely, lovely. <laughs> Lots and lots of bits and pieces. But that there. And inside here, we've got. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the last hour, or thereabouts, when we started as a week old walk, you see, I wonder if you realise just how far you've walked with me. Yes, yes, yes. You've walked the longest walk you can ever walk. Yes. Because I wasn't fumbling about when I put that on there. We come to the last final items. Oh, oh yes. They're laying out stocking. Oh, no. And that, which you saw me fetch out of the case, is the laying out stocking. But all is not sadness, because there's always a new beginning. And bless you, and thank you, because you walked the longest walk you'll ever walk in your lives. You've walked from the cradle to the cradle.
permission, I would like to read you a poem because that's what I really do. I've been writing poems now for 23 years. And there's one little poem which seems to catch on with most people. I'm just in flowers, I'd like to read it to you. And I call it Three Poundless Sugar. <clears throat> our flowers of life are our children, born from God's loving seed. They bloom through his wonderful creation, fill our lives with all that we need. They give love, joy and satisfaction. Yes, we know sometimes a tear, but only God knows the feeling within us when a child felt snuggle is near. We gain from them pride and admiration when they achieve the simplest task. Small gifts become treasures, tiny phrases in memories last. That moment when we kiss it better, from that small tumble of awe, cannot be measured in any way. A moment not known to all, but the measure that is the greatest to any granddad or grandmother when asked how much they love you, they answer three pounds of sugar. <laughs> 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 don't like me saying this, but I always say it. Now you see why Brenda comes. She puts them all back <laughs> so that I can confidently fetch them all out of the next door. God bless you. Rather than the rain outside. Thank you very much. And to Barbara and George and the ladies from Bourne Chapel, I'd like to thank you for providing us with a nice, lovely supper. <laughs>